Options are an amazing tool and can be used in so many different ways, whether it be to generate income, hedge risk, or even bet on a direction. You can really be as conservative or as insanely risky as you want and everything in between. Now, since there are a ton of different strategies out there and ways to use them, options can be a bit confusing when you're first getting started. I'm certainly not going to make you an expert in a single video, but today we will go over a quick introduction to what options are, a few of the most popular strategies out there, and how you can actually trade them within Weeble. First off, what are options? Options are simply a contract giving you the right to buy or sell a stock at a set price for a set amount of time. There are going to be call options, which give us the right to buy the stock at a set price, and also put options, which give us the right to sell the stock at a set price. Those contracts are going to be traded just like stock and will be constantly changing in value. Now, although those options contracts grant you the right to buy or sell the stock at a set price, generally you're never going to actually want to exercise those contracts. Meaning you don't ever want to buy or sell the stock itself, but rather buy and sell the contract. You'll also want to remember that each option contract represents 100 shares of stock. So when you see an option trading for $2, it's really going to cost you $200 to buy it. They're also going to be affected by things like time, volatility, or even interest rates. So that means you can eventually learn to trade them to bet not only on the stock price changing, basically the stock price going up or down, but also you could trade things like time and things like volatility. Now, in terms of actually trading them within Webull, you are generally going to be doing so right from the option chain itself, which you can actually add to any window on Webull. You can see here, I currently have the option chain right here, but if you needed to add one for yourself, you could do so by coming up here to the top right hand corner of the platform. We'll then go ahead and click on this little briefcase icon, which is the add widgets menu. We'll then look in the menu down below at all of the different widgets available to us, and we're simply going to find the one marked Options and go ahead and click on that. You can then see a new little widget appears over here on the left hand side, a brand new little option chain right here, and I could actually click and hold down on that and drag it wherever I wanted it. So if I wanted to put it right here in the Active Trader window, I could drag it up here and let go, and now I've got a second option chain right here. But in my case, I don't need a second one, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it and drag it on out of there. Then I'm going to come over here to the right hand side, click on these three little lines here, and go ahead and say remove options to get rid of that brand new gadget. I'm also going to come over here and close out of the add widgets menu. Now that we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and head back over to my current option chain over here on the left hand side. And the first thing you'll notice is right here, I've currently got the Google option chain pulled up. So that simply means that all of the options down here below are going to be the Google options. Right at the top of the option chain, you will also see a bunch of different buttons here, all of which are going to act as filters for the chain below. Basically just adjusting what information you're going to see in this chain, but I'm going to touch on all of these filters a little bit later in the video. The first thing you need to decide when you're going to trade an option contract is what expiration you want to trade. Basically, how long do you want this option to be good for? Coming over here to the left, we can actually see all of the options expirations available on Google. So here you can see the 7 October expiration going all the way out to the 17 January of 2025 expiration. Coming back out for a second, if we were to look to the right of each of those expirations in the center column here, we can actually see the number of days until expiration. So up here at the top, we can see 7 October is two days from today. And then if we looked all the way down to the January 2025 expiration, that is 835 days from today. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly which option expiration to choose or how far in time you should typically go, since that is really going to depend on your particular strategy. However, I will mention that if you choose to pick an option close to expiration, you can expect to see a lot of volatility in those options. So for example, if we were to come up here and look at the 7 October options, you can expect to see a lot of volatility in those. Those options can change quickly in value, which can be great if it's in your favor, but not so great if it goes against you. If you instead go further out in time, and if you do that, you will be spending more and more money the further out in time you go, but you will be less affected by things like time decay. Now, any options that are further out in time than a year are going to be known as leap options. And a lot of people pick those because time decay has a very tiny effect on those ones. Time passing doesn't have much of an impact. 
But unfortunately, there isn't a one size fits all answer to what expiration is best. And since we do need to move forward with this example, let's just say for example's sake that we typically like to trade options that expire about 30 days out. In that case, if we were to come up here, it looks like the four November options are about 30 days out. And in order to actually expand that option chain, we are simply going to click on the date. That'll then open up the actual option chain down below and down the center of the screen, we can see a few of the available strikes. Right here begins with the $100 strike and goes all the way out to the 105 strike. In the middle here, we can also see the current price of Google stock. So Google is currently trading for $102.22. Now remember the strike price, and remember that's just the number down the center column here, is simply the price that you are getting the right to buy or sell the stock for until the 4th of November. In order to see more available strikes and maybe go further out of the money, we could come up here to the upper left hand corner, where it currently says 6 right here. If we were to click on that, a little drop down menu is going to come up and we could either type in how many strikes we want to see, or come down below in the list and actually just select how many strikes we like to see. For right now, we'll just come down here and select 10 for now. And now looking down below, we can see a few more strikes have been added. So right here, we can see we now have the $98 strike and then all the way down to the 107 it looks like. On the chain itself, you'll also notice that the in the money options have more of a bluish shaded background and the out of the money options have more of a black background. Coming up here to the very top of the option chain, you'll also notice all of the info columns displaying information like the current implied volatility, the current midpoint for the option, the percent change for the day on that option, the last traded price of that option today, as well as the current bid and ask for that option. In order to change those, we would simply come over here to the little menu icon over here on the far left hand side. That'll then display all of the columns we could add over here on the left hand side, as well as all of our current items over here on the right hand side. For right now, let's actually say I wanted to get rid of all of these columns and I actually wanted to add the Greeks, Delta Gamma Theta Vega. So to do that, we'll come over here to the left and let's just go ahead and scroll through this list here. Go ahead and add Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll just come down here and hit done. And now looking here at the option chain, we can see all of the Greeks for each individual option strike. And these Greeks are going to tell us how this option is going to change in value. So how exactly is the option going to move if the stock price goes up or down, or if time passes, or if volatility changes? That is exactly what we're seeing here with these Greeks. But now that we have a general idea of what it is we're looking at here and how to customize it a bit, placing the trades themselves is actually pretty simple. We're simply going to click on the asking price when we want to buy and the bid price when we want to sell. So as an example, let's say we're bullish on Google right now. We think it's going up. One strategy that could make sense is just simply buying a call option. So looking at all the call options right now, let's say we wanted to get one way out of the money. So down here below, we can see a bunch of the available strike prices. And let's say we wanted to get a 107 call. At the moment, we can see the current delta on that option is 0.36, which again, it is out of the money, and that's essentially telling us we're going to make about $36 with a $1 move of the stock price. I don't want to get too deep into the Greeks in today's video, but again, this is going to be very, very important later down the line, but check out one of my other videos to learn more about the Greeks. Now, coming back over here to the right, we can see the current price of this option is 261 by 292. And remember, like I said, if we want to buy an option, we need to click on the current asking price, which as of right now is $2.92. You'll notice that as soon as I click on the asking price, it actually builds out an order ticket down here below at the very bottom of the screen in this little order entry tool. Within this order ticket, we're going to be able to specify how many contracts we want to buy, the price we want to pay, the order type we want to use, and then how long we want that order good for. So starting here from left to right, it's saying we're going to buy a single option. It's going to be on Google, G-O-O-G. -O -O we're getting the 107 strike call. It's going to be expiring on the 4th of November. Again, it is a call option. It's telling us right here that we're buying it. And as of right now, we're buying one with a limit order at $2.92. To change those things, like let's say, for example, we wanted to buy two contracts. We could come over here to the quantity and just bump it up to two. To the right of that, you can also see we are currently using a limit order, which means we are specifying a price. We're saying we only want to buy this contract if we can buy it for $2.92 or better. 
all of that could of course be changed. Like for example, if we were to come over here and click on the order type limit, you'll actually see we've got the order types market, stop and stop limit available to us as well. Now a market order, that simply means we wanna buy or sell these contracts at whatever the current price is. We just wanna fill immediately. The stops on the other hand, whether it be a stop or a stop limit, those are generally gonna be used to get you out of the position before you take on too great a loss, before you lose too much money. Now, for me personally, I would never use a market order on an option and I would be very, very careful to use a stop. So 99% of the time I'm using limit orders whenever I'm trading options, but you do have other choices available to you. Now, once that's done, if we were to come over here to the limit price, remember, we don't have to take whatever the current asking price is. We can ask for a better price. If we were to come down to the lower left-hand corner of this little order ticket for a second, you can actually see what the current bid and asking price are, as well as the current midpoint. For those of you who might not be as familiar with these numbers, remember the current asking price is the price that we know we can buy it for right this second. So that means there's a seller out there who's willing to sell it for 292, and if we wanted to buy it, we could match up to that seller. The bid on the other hand, this person is the best buyer in the market right now, which means if we wanted to sell this contract right now, we know we can sell it for 261. The price between those two numbers, the one that says M right here or midpoint, that's gonna be the current midpoint of this option contract, the midpoint between the bid and the ask. So as of right now, the current midpoint is $2.76, and a lot of times we can fill at the mid. So if I were to come over here, I'm gonna adjust this to the current midpoint, $2.76, and then finally, the very last thing I can do is specify how long I want this order good for. As of right now, it is currently marked as a day order only, which means if this order does not fill by the end of the day today, I just wanna cancel it. If I instead wanted to make it good until canceled, I could click on this button right here that says GTC, and that simply means if this order does not fill today, try again tomorrow, and the next day, and so on, until it either fills or until I cancel it. Now, for the most part, that is it. If we were to come down here to the lower left-hand corner, it's going to tell us that this trade is going to cost us approximately 552 bucks if we fill at that price we're trying to buy it at. If I look a little bit further to the right, we can see my current option BP is only $34. So I can't actually place this trade right now. I don't have enough money. But if I did, the only thing I would have to do is come over here and hit place order. It's then going to bring up a little order confirmation just to confirm everything looks right. And then I would hit send one more time. Since I can't actually place it, we'll just come up here and delete the order ticket. And to do that, we'll just put our mouse on it. I'm going to right click on it, then come down here below and select delete order. Now on the flip side of that, buying a put option is essentially the exact same process. But before we do that, let's come up here to the top and flip this over to a different stock ticker. For this next example, let's go ahead and pull up SoFi, S-O-F-I, hit enter on the keyboard here. Coming back down below, you can see at the moment I currently have the 7 October expiration pulled up. And down here in the center, we can see all of the available strike prices right now. In this example, I said we were bearish. Basically, we're saying we think the stock is gonna go down in value. So that means we're gonna be looking at the put options over here on the right-hand side. In this case, let's say I was looking at buying a right at the money put, and at the moment, that looks like it would be the $5 put. And if we look to the right, we can see that put option is currently trading for three cents by four cents. In order to buy it, just like in the call example, we are gonna click on the asking price. So in this case, as soon as we click on this number here, four cents, we can again see the order ticket gets built out down here at the very bottom of the screen. We could again go through this and adjust how many contracts we wanted to buy, the order type we wanted to use, the price we were willing to pay, and then how long we wanted the order good for. Going through this for just a second, let's actually say we did, and I'm gonna come down here and adjust this from a day order to a GTC order. I'm gonna leave everything else be, saying we wanna buy one contract with a limit order at four cents, and since I'm happy, I'm gonna come down here and hit place order. Once I do that, I can see a little order confirmation screen pops up, and again, it's just confirming everything we just filled out on the previous screen. What I really like is this little profit and loss graph down here below, where it's telling me exactly how much I could make or lose on this particular trade. So in this case, it's telling me the absolute most I could ever make on this trade is going to be $496. And that's if SoFi were to go down to $0 a share. Basically, SoFi goes bankrupt. To the right of that, it's telling me the break-even point. So essentially, if I were to hold this option till expiration, this is where I need SoFi to go just to get my $4 back. 
You can also see over here to the right is the current last traded price for SoFi, $5.32. And then over here on the far right is my max loss, $4. So now that everything looks right and I do wanna place this trade, I'm gonna come down here and hit the buy button in the lower right hand corner. We can now see that the order has been placed and in order to keep track of that, we could actually come over here to the far right hand side to my little orders window. It might be a little bit hard to see, but this is the order ticket right here to buy that $5 put. Later down the line, if I wanted to cancel that order, I could simply come here and right click on it. Then come down here below and either hit cancel order to just outright cancel it or modify it if I wanted to adjust it in some way. Now in my case, I just want to outright cancel it. So I'm going to come down here and hit cancel order. Then just come up here and hit okay to confirm that I do in fact want to cancel it. Now the two examples that we just went over, buying a call and buying a put, those two strategies are essentially the most basic thing that you can do with options. Besides just buying calls and buying puts, you've also got income strategies like covered calls and cash secured puts, or you've got more complex trades like verticals, iron condors, or butterflies. And honestly, that's just a few of the available strategies that are out there, and it's going to take time to learn them all. Do not try to learn them all at once. It does take time. I promise you I go way more in depth than other videos on other strategies like that, and I will continue to do so. But hopefully after all that, you do feel a lot more comfortable with how to trade options on Weeble. If you do still have questions, please let me know below and I will do my absolute best to help. And in the meantime, if you are looking to learn more, check out this video next. But that's it for now. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one.